Well, it is March and the temperatures are slowly warming up. I'm in zone 6B in Western North Carolina of the USA. And so I am about seven to eight weeks from what we call our last spring frost date here. And so I wanna show you some things I've been working on. This is my fall garden last year. And I wanted to show you where my beds are placed here and how I've been rearranging the garden. Now I have moved my beds to the center of the garden where I hope that they will receive more sunlight. Over the years, the trees have gotten bigger and bigger and they're shading my garden. That center is the best spot for sun. So um, I also would like to encourage you to check out my February gardening video if you haven't done that. And I talked a little bit about the toxic black walnut tree. I'm also having to plan my garden around that. So I basically just want to show you some of the things I'm working on as far as my spring plantings. Um, I am now moving all of my spring starts outdoors and they're staying outside day and night. I showed you how I like to start those indoors. Um, I'll leave a link to that video if you did if you missed it, okay? So here are some of my uh, spring herbs I love to use like green onion and cilantro. I started those indoors in January and now they are outdoors uh, for the spring. So this time of year I am constantly checking the weather report. Um, all of my spring plantings can stay outside unless I guess it gets down into the single digits or teens or something I may want to bring them inside. However, my summer vegetables such as my tomatoes and peppers that I'm also moving outdoors right now so they can receive full sunlight, I do have to bring those indoors at night until after the last spring frost date. These are very frost sensitive plants and so I need to make sure that I am keeping an eye on that weather report. The cool season vegetables that I showed you just there they can stay outdoors because they don't mind a little frost. Okay, they grow very well with a little frost. Now I've also started some tomatoes and peppers as a backup in a windowsill box and I showed you how to do that last year. I'll leave a link to that playlist so you can see how I start my peppers and tomatoes indoors. And um, some of these I've also started are herbs and these are warm season herbs. So they are already coming up. I sowed those about uh, three days ago. It's Wednesday now and I sowed those on Sunday night. So they're already starting to pop up out of the soil. Now we'll move down to the garage where I like to overwinter a pomegranate tree as well as a Meyer lemon tree. Well, let me tell you about the pomegranate tree. I left it outside last fall for, as we were going into the winter, I left it outside and it experienced a lot of freeze uh, temperatures, freezing temperatures for about three weeks straight. I really thought that I probably lost this plant, but now I see that there is some growth coming out on it. I see some little uh, leaf buds come popping out, so that's great. So I think I'm gonna have a pomegranate tree again this year. <laughs> and then of course my Meyer lemon tree, I've had this for three years and um, it is just looking beautiful. I, it's never looked this good and I guess I'm impressed because I've totally neglected this tree over the years. I just put it on a little dolly so I can roll it in and out of my garage um, and I, I water it and I fertilize it occasionally but I haven't taken real good care of it so it's looking really good. I'm happy about that. Now these are my containers for peppers. I um, like to grow all of my peppers in containers and I'll leave a link to give you a little bit more information about that if you would uh, like to see some um, information about how I grow peppers. I've already amended the soil for some of the containers. I put some compost in here along with some peat moss and I reused some of the old potting soil from last year's pepper container garden. I just I had to discard some of that soil because I had one pepper that was diseased so I don't like to reuse potting soil where there was a plant growing that was diseased. So anyway, I'm getting those ready for the pepper garden in May. And I also have some seeds that I've saved, such as mustard and cilantro. So I'm gonna use some of those to plant the garden. I have some potatoes here too. And I also have some seed packets and I'll go over those with you here in just a minute. I usually like to take down um, everything in a basket down to my garden. I'll also take down a few tools. I'll use a knee pad and then a bulb planter, little shovel there, a hand rake, and a wooden skewer. And then I also fill up a five gallon bucket with water. And in that bucket, I like to put a little child's watering can. And that way I can just sprinkle out a little water over the seeds once I've um, put them in the soil. Now I've already planted out my peas for the season. I showed you how to grow peas. I'll leave a link to that video if you missed it. 
And here are just a few of the other things that I'm going to grow. I'm going to put out some carrots. I have a variety of different carrots here. And I showed you how to grow carrots. Um, also, I have some just leafy Chinese cabbage. I have some chervil, which is a nice little spring herb. I have some turnip greens. In the south, we like to grow turnip greens. We don't grow turnip greens for the turnip root. <laughs> so this is called a seven top turnip. I'm growing radishes and these are French breakfast radishes. I love bunching onions, so I'm going green bunching onions this year as long as red bunching onions. And then in my how to grow parsley video, I talked about the parsley root, so I'm growing a couple of different varieties of parsley root. And then I saved some dill seed. Love, I just love dill. That's one of my favorite spring herbs. So I've got some dill seed, and then I showed you how to grow spinach. So this is my Teton spinach. That's the one I like to grow. I also have parsley and a blend of lettuce. So I'll just show you a few things I'm going to plant here and how I do it. And this is the cilantro seed that I saved and dried from last year. I'll just cover it up a little bit with some soil and water it in. Um, this uh, herb usually reseeds in my garden and I don't have to plant it at all because it's from last year's um, growth. It will just reseed naturally, but I always like to have a backup. And this is the mustard, and so I just crush open the pods a little bit, cover them up with some soil, and then I'll water those in as well, and that is wonderful. It comes up very nice that way. And then I have, of course, the dill, and I'll just sprinkle some of that out and water it in as well. I usually, like I said, don't have to plant this too because it reseeds in my garden. The cilantro and the dill come up first thing, and but I do like to make sure I have, it, have planted it also. <laughs> Now here are just some onions. I started these in cups inside my house in January. I don't think I did a video on that, but I like to go ahead and plant these out. I should have probably could have planted these out a little bit earlier, but I think this will be fine. And I need to prune my blueberry bushes. I'm pruning these this year for the production. I think I showed you last year how to prune your blueberry bushes, and I think I did that for uh, just to get the plant established and I did it for air circulation but now I'm going to cut off some of the old growth I, I removed about 50% of the plant I'll leave a link to a video below um, this video so that you can learn more about how to prune your blueberry bushes I uh, found a good informative video on YouTube for that this is one of my four garden beds that I uh, need to weed and clean it out. It takes me about two hours to do this every year. So um, this is what it looks like afterwards. And I do this by hand with my little handbrake. Okay, so there you have it. Hopefully you found that helpful. I'd also like to encourage you to head on over to my Google Plus page where you can click on collections. And there I have put together a video collection of how to grow a spring garden. So over the years I've done little videos here and there to kind of show you what you can grow in your spring garden and I think you'll find a lot of these helpful if you've not ever grown a spring garden. You need to make sure that you're getting those seeds and plants out in the uh, garden about four to eight weeks before your last spring frost day and if you're not familiar with that you can contact your county extension office. Sometimes they also have printable um, calendars to tell you when to plant your vegetable garden okay so thank you so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day